privilege has not Keith been Davidson calls it a coincidence that just before the presidential election, he was involved in the deals for not one, but two women who claimed to have had affairs with Donald Trump, effectively keeping their stories secret. Do you believe what Stormy Daniels has said about the sexual encounter with Mr. Trump? <clears throat> you know, I, I believe my client. And Kara McDougal? Yes. For the first time, Davidson is speaking exclusively to CNN, saying he is constrained by attorney-client privilege, but still giving new details about how the deals came about. Stormy Daniels' confidentiality deal, signed just days before the election, started with a phone call from Donald Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen. And Michael Cohen calls you up and says, what about Stormy Daniels? He says... Uh, I'm, I'm hearing rumblings out there that, uh, you know, the press is poking around about Stormy Daniels. Do you have any information on that? Did you at the time? No. So what did you say back? I'll call you back. And what happened in between that time? Well, that's, that's where really the, the communications, you know, get in between, you know, my client and I and what I can and cannot dis disclose and everything else. Do you see how the phone call from Michael Cohen might seem nefarious in the fact that he called you... No, uh, quite frankly, I, I really don't. Uh, you know, Mr. Cohen and I had a discussion in 2011. Uh, there was a, a website that posted a story about Miss Daniels in 2011. Uh, I did use my best efforts to get that story taken down, you know, pursuant to my client's wishes. Uh, we were successful in doing that. And five years later, the story percolates up again. I think it's a completely natural phone call for anyone to make in Mr. Cohen's position to circle back and say, have circumstances changed? That was really what it was. It was an inquiry. That inquiry led to Daniel signing an agreement not to talk about the affair in exchange for $130,000. Can you tell me about the payment? Did Michael Cohen ever indicate to you that he was paying this $130,000 for Stormy Daniels out of his own personal finances? Yes. And back then, did he say to you, look, I'm having to take a loan out of my house to get this done? No, there's never any conversation about that. And it was just one of a number of contacts between Cohen and Davidson. A few weeks earlier, Davidson says he himself reached out to Cohen after brokering an agreement between Playboy playmate Karen McDougal, who sold the rights to her story to AMI, the parent company of the National Enquirer, for $150,000. I think I called him as a professional courtesy uh, to let him know that uh, a matter was resolved um, and that uh, as a professional courtesy that it may or may not have involved uh, his client. Was he involved in the, in the deal at all? certainly wasn't involved on our end. Uh, and there's no basis for me to believe that he was involved or had any communication with AMI. Do you see why Karen McDougal and her now current representation might construe that as a conspiracy behind her back, that there's something else going on, that Michael Cohen was behind all this, being a puppet master, if you will? Well, I think generally speaking, I mean, a conspiracy would have to involve an act that would take place before. Uh, and that simply wasn't the case. Uh, my conversation with Michael Cohen took place after Ms. McDougall had already uh, solidified the deal with AMI. Davidson says he and Cohen met in person this year more than once to discuss potential violations of the non-disclosure contract. Have you spoken to Michael Cohen since? Yes. And what did he say to you? Well, the last conversation I had with Michael Cohen, uh, he, uh, he called to offer his opinion um, as to whether or not uh, Ms. Daniels and, and Ms. McDougall had breached uh, the attorney-client privilege uh, and thereby waived it. Uh, and it was his assertion uh, that each of them had. And he was uh, encouraging me and informing me as to his opinion uh, that they, they, in fact, had waived the attorney-client privilege. And uh, he suggested that it would be appropriate for me uh, to go out into the media and spill my guts. Are you here be at the behest of Michael Cohen? <laughs> no, 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 not in any way, shape, or form. Davidson was eventually fired by both women, who then hired new attorneys and filed suit to get out of their deals. Why are you here? Uh, you know, there's been certain things that have been, uh, you know, written and said, and I'd like the truth to come out and to the extent that I can uh, assist in that endeavor. Uh, that's really why I'm here.
Is the whole truth out yet? No, I don't believe so. I think most of it, not the whole truth. Michael Avenatti, Stormy's current attorney, had something to say about that. He said that Mr. Davidson should not be making any comments to the press relating to the matter or a client that has terminated him, including Miss Daniels. He also said that obviously all of that, the facts have not been put out there, which he has been saying for weeks. Mr. Cohen did not have a comment for us for this story. 